Hey everybody, Don Carr here with Jared Brandon from Gibson to talk about and listen to some of their new pickups and newly available pickups. Welcome, Jared. Thank you. It's How you doing, man? It's great to be man? here, man. I'm doing great. It's, it's great, great to be here at Sweet Water. Yeah, nice, man. Nice to have you. So we've got a bunch of new offerings from Gibson and some new designs from you, and this is pretty exciting, man. So we've got the 57 Classic Underwound, the Custom Bucker Underwound, the Greenie Bucker Set, the Dirty Fingers single magnet, and we've got a P90DC and the P90 Underwound for the neck. Yeah, this is a pretty nice assortment here. Yeah, I felt that um, with especially the Underwound series, mm -hmm. adding this series to our current catalog would kind of give uh, even a more broader uh, tone selection. Than, yeah. than what we've had. Putting an underwound pickup in the neck just really changes the uh, the profile, just changes the sound, it changes the combination of the two as well, you know, between the uh, the bridge and the neck pickup. Just love that. So what we did was when we heard about these pickups, it was like, okay, well, let's test them out, man. Let's, let's give them a listen. And we used the same guitar and the same amplifier and the same recording chain and all that stuff. And all we really did was just swap the pickups. And so we'll listen to those here awesome. today. And I want to yeah. get your... Uh, I want to get your reaction on this, see what you think about it, man. I'd love to. And let's listen to the, uh, let's listen to the 57 Classics. So we'll hear the originals first, and then we'll hear the uh, Underwound. <laughs> Okay, so that was the standard. Now here is the underwound version. Right away for me, like as a player, I just, the balance between the two is just wow. I really like the sound of the Underwound with the bridge pickup. I mean, that's a that's a great combination. Yeah, I I think so too. The Underwound to me, it's it's more hi-fi. You can squeeze in some more dynamics um, with that sound. Um, yeah, and and that's that's the whole point of that. It's just to to give actually to take away windings. To, to give you a different sound. Yeah, man, and it totally works. One of the things that I noticed with all of the underwounds in the neck position kind of consistently, and I'll bring, I'll bring it back up because it's just, it's great. It changes the emphasis on the low end, you know, and some of that stuff that can be, especially in a Les Paul, can be a little woofy and a little, you know, unruly at times when you're trying to like carve out a sound or you're trying to balance a sound, especially something that's louder with, you know, a lot of gain. Maybe you want some, some good punch out of it. It's, it's hard to rectify getting that neck pickup to sound right. Man, the underwound just, boy, takes a lot of that problem away for me personally. It does. When that string oscillates in that position in the neck, which is a lot more than what it would be in the bridge position. Yeah. Anybody can pluck a guitar and see that. It, yeah. you have a more low frequency response. Right. So if you, you take away some of that uh, power, you come up with that more hi-fi, um, less boomy sound. And yeah. that's, that's what I love about the comparison between the, the rhythm and the bridge is the balance. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so here is, we'll do the custom bucker standard and then the custom bucker underwound. You can hear, or you can hear the pickup switch and you can obviously tell the sound difference. But I think, I think with all these, I started with the neck and then I went to a quick shot of the bridge and then the combination. So I think we're gonna hear that same format again here with the custom buckers. <laughs>
right, that's the standard, and here's the underwound. Even the end of that note, right? Yeah. Jeez. But I love the personality that the custom buckers have anyway. There's like a little particular snarl. And man, that underwound neck pickup really lets that shine, man. Yeah. The uh, combination with the All Nico 3 magnet, mm -hmm. which is one of the weakest All Nico magnets, even weaker than All Nico 2, huh. uh, without that, with that All Nico 3 magnet, is a little less a magnetic power. And you have an unpotted pickup as well. Right. If you were to compare that to the 57, there's even more dynamics, more of a historic sound. Yeah. It's comparable with the original PAF humbuckers. Yeah. And when you get it in the underwound, again, you have more choice. You have more selection there of what you're, you're going for as far as sound. Yeah, exactly, man. Like you say, you got more dynamic range to begin with oh, because yeah. you can play... You can play harder and you're going to get more response out of it, you know, and you can play quieter and it's going to back the volume down. I mean, just even from that, from that first note, when I'm playing that low E, that, mm. da, 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 that little there, I mean, it's so obvious. Wow. Yeah. So this is kind of the outlier. There's no comparison here, but the, here's the greenie bucker set. <laughs> Those are great sounding pickups, man. Good grief. All right, so aside from like giving away like deep dark trade secrets or anything, yeah. is there is there anything you can say about kind of the special sauce that makes those pickups sound the way they sound? I mean, because that, man, the way they respond to gain is just pretty amazing. Well, there's been a lot of talk about how the neck pickup's been rewound mm -hmm. and how all okay. that's been done and everything. Yeah. So we understand all that, but our overall goal mm -hmm. is to get these pickups to sound exactly the way that uh, the actual green guitar sounds. So that was our goal in mind and, and getting the specs from uh, Kirk's team and then having Kirk approve was, was a really big deal. And yeah. I'm, I'm really happy to be on the team that, that helped discover that. Oddly enough, they translate really well into another guitar. I mean, this is, I mean, it's a good Les Paul, but it's just, you know, it's just a Les Paul, right? But it sounded like the Greeny it's guitar. Cool. It sounded great, man. They're great. Great playing, too. Oh, well, thank you, man. Appreciate that. So next is the uh, Dirty Fingers Single Magnet. So this is pretty curious, man. And I'm thinking on this one, let me see, on this example, it seems like I just played a bridge position thing and a little bit higher gain so we'll hear the stock that's perfect yeah we'll hear the stock and then we'll hear the uh um the single magnet <laughs> Here's the single magnet.
Okay, so right away for me, I like the top end on the signal magnet better. I definitely do. It's, it seems to be a little, a little smoother, um, especially in that kind of like that some of those critical ranges on guitar, you know, like 4K, where it really can get pointy if you're not careful, especially the more gain you put on something, the more clarity you try to get out of something. Yeah. Man, that, yeah, that's nice. And the, and when that last chord too, man, just the depth of the harmonics, man, it seemed like there was just more harmonic information going on. The regular Dirty Fingers we've been making for, gosh, more than 40 years, which wow. is a great pickup. Yeah, yeah, clearly. I kind of took away some of the magnetic power. So SM stands for signal magnet, as you right. said, signal magnet. Yeah. And what that does is it takes away some of the sensitivity of of that. Yeah. So the higher end treble, it kind of takes some of that away. So so there's more mid-strong for you know heavy rock yeah. and and not so much of the high end. Yeah. That was my goal. And the team really liked it too, so yeah. we went with that. Yeah, it totally works, man. So yeah, I'm sensing a theme here. It's like a little, you know, a little less output over overall on these pickups, and it kind of like opens the voice up a little bit. It does. You know? Yeah. All right, so for the last comparison, we took a Les Paul special, right? And so used the stock pickups in the Les Paul special and replaced them with both of the P90 options that you guys have now. You have the DC that we put in the bridge and the underwound that's in the neck. So we're going to go through that same thing. We're going to hear both pickups individually and then both together. So we'll listen to the stock version first and then the uh, underwound and the DC second. Cool? Perfect. All right, man. <laughs> Stock. Now here is the underwound and the DC. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty dramatic, man, on both of them. It is. Man, again, back to the balance between the two pickups. That last example there, you know, with the with the with both pickups, I just I couldn't get over the clarity in the low end with the underwound pickup. Yeah, that's the magic with those. Yeah. You, there's just more room, you know, going the other way instead yeah. of trying to get super hot and you know, right. you're going the opposite direction for right. more dynamics. A hi-fi is a good way to yeah to uh, describe it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that that's our goal. Just basically, hey, we have more to choose from here. Uh, shape your sound, man. Yeah, yeah, no kidding, man. Well, you know, and again, too, like you said, this is kind of a a different set of offerings for Gibson in general. You know, it across is. the whole line. And uh, the P90 DC, I think uh, Jim Decola did a great job. Yeah. Uh, doing that project too. So it, it sounds traditional without the hum. Jared, thanks so much for being here, man. Really appreciate it, man. It was my pleasure. I love Sweetwater. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure to check out the article, Gibson Introduces New Pickups. It's an in-sync article on Sweetwater's site. There's a link in the description. And definitely check out Gibson's new pickups. Great stuff from Gibson. And of course, you can see all those at Sweetwater.com or contact your Sweetwater sales engineer.